This is part 11 of my series of tutorials about uh, making models for Train to Railway Simulator in GMAX and this is the GMAX window which we met um, in all of the sessions up to now and what I'm aiming to do this time is to create a very basic um, 040 uh, the, the driving wheels of an 040 tank locomotive purely fictitious um, and I'm going to do it at some speed I'm going to go a bit faster than I have been going in the tutorials and um, just to and I'll describe what I'm doing but I won't be going into great details about which tools because they're all tools which I've already introduced and um, I want you to start getting a bit um, uh, experimenting and, and getting really used to them so first of all what we're going to do is make uh, this it's going to be two two uh, two two wheel axles and um, they're going to be animated and there will then be the connecting rods uh, connecting them and then there will be a cylinder and a driving rod and my aim is to show you how to create these and to animate them uh, and at this stage I won't be doing any uh, texturing so the first thing I want to do is to make a tube this is in our standard premises and I'm going to make a tube by holding down the left mouse button and dragging out the uh, diameter and then when I release it it's a bit different to other standard primitives because you get the inner diameter of the tube and you uh, change that to whatever you want or just guess it and then you click it again and then there's a third time and you draw it out and you can see you've got a lot of segments a lot of vertices uh, in that it's also much bigger than me, me because it's actually 89 feet 8 inches in radius so the first thing I'm going to do having done that at, now is I'm going to customize our home grid once more down to one foot squares and um, so we only want something um, let's say it's for a small um, well I'll say a three foot gauge narrow gauge locomotive so plainly this is far too um, big so first of all it's also got five height segments one two three four five so we want we'll reduce that to one that immediately divides the number of vertices by five takes it down to a fifth of its original size the internal diameter we want it to be uh, well we're going to do three foot six inch driving wheels and um, so we take the internal diameter down to three foot which will be very small here because we're in such a big scale at the moment and the outer diameter to three foot six and there we are absolutely tiny and it's very long it's like a long tube 17 in, uh, feet so we'll just take that down to one foot at the moment i know that's still too, far too um long but it doesn't matter at this stage far too wide at this stage it doesn't matter uh, and we'll just make sure we've got the center of the object and we're going to move it so it's zeroed throughout there we are. and now we're zooming and notice I'm using the left view I always make wheels in this way I think it's the most sensible way um, I can't really think of any other way you could do them to be honest um, so we go to um, just display that window and there we have 18 if you remember if we look down here we've got only one height segment don't worry about cap segments size so that's 18 to make our wheel and wheels always want to look as smooth as possible and um, if you take them up to 24 then um, it divides up uh, much better very small wheels you can take, take down to 16 but I like to take these up to 24 so there we are taking up to 24 sides and you saw that change immediately um, it still means that our polygon counter is 192 for this wheel and at this stage the wheel is uh, it's a six inch wide tube okay so uh, as far as that goes um, all very well and good but um, think about it I am going to texture it so that will be the next stage and my next stage then is uh, I'm going to introduce a texture so come up to here and we'll create a new texture new standard okay and we're going to call it frames and uh, the reason why we call it that or why I'm calling it that is because when I first started doing these 
I made a basic texture which um, I use for a lot of things um, a series of greys and we'll see anyway as soon as I load it up there we are it's quite a small texture but it is even then subdivided into a whole series of different um, shades of grey and we'll see that when I come to edit it and um, so there it is frames and then I'm also going to copy it copy of frames I'm going to change the name see how it's made another one up here and I'm going to call it shiny frames just to remind you it's shiny and, I, and this time instead of remember we used opacity well this time I'm going to bring in reflection and this is going to be another bitmap it has to be a BMP file and where is it envelope metal there we are and that's going to give us our shininess so I open that so now you can see we've got shiny frames up there but that's not quite how I want it to be it's far too shiny so we're going to reduce this down to about 30% shiny and you see how there's a bit of reflection there but it's not as strong compare that unshy uh, no shiny bits there no reflection there compared to this one which has got 30% and that's because we want to make the tyre the around the wheel um, shiny and um, so let's let's uh, texture this wheel straight away before we do anything else and it's still a tube so I'm not worrying about it I'm just going to jump right on in there and I'm going to texture it with frames there we are and it's the texture is all a bit of a mishmash is on there so unwrap um, edit and there's all those many polys that make up the wheel and we're going to take them all and see I've selected scale and we're going to scale them down and I'm going to, you can see now my frames texture now it's got a variety of sort of textures and surfaces on it all quite small but good for small things and I'm going to take it down to this one down here and the whole thing will be textured just down there in that little bit down there okay right and now I'm going to clone the wheel and um, so we come up to here and we'll edit clone and we'll move it we only want to move it in one direction and I'm going to uh, put a second texture on top of that it's shiny frames and I'm going to still got the it's exactly the same as the other one just going to edit it but you see we've got the shininess there and I want a lighter See, we've got Mac 1, which is actually ordinary frames. Then we've got Mac 1 again and Mac 2 together, which is the reflective one. So we go to this one here. And I'm going to bring this over, shrink it down a bit more. And stick it there. And that's going to be our shiny, the light grey shiny tyre. And um, the only other thing I need to do really, which I should have done before this, is to reduce the thickness of the height down to six inches and do the same with this one. Gee, I should have done that before I cloned them so that they're identical. But you remember these things after you're meant to have done it. It's just the way it goes when you're doing this. I'm just centering those up again. Okay, and I want this one to make sure this one is. Ah, oh, there we are. Look, make sure it is still centered. Even though it says zero, 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 there's a minus in there, but I like to get rid of that. Okay, now um, in order to make a shiny tire, that's the tire there that we want, but we only want a bit of it, and we um, don't want the tire on that one, so we come right up. Perspective wireframe, and now. <clears throat> this is when we're going to reduce this to a poly editable poly I'm going to select polys and we're just going to go around and if I hold down the control button I can select multiple polys so go around like that and we delete those maybe already beginning to see where I'm going with this uh, and we delete those and we're going to delete these right round the wheel just make sure we haven't left one over there, nope they're all okay 
Right, and now we're going to do the same over here. We're going to reduce it down to a poly. But there's a quicker way than going all around and deleting everything. That's what I did then, because obviously we want to keep those ones, not lose them. So let's just move it in the Y axis so over the way. Go into our left view, and we can see it's the one that's highlighted over on the left here. Let's increase that. Okay. And now, instead of choosing polys, choose vertices. Select some. Hold down the control button. Select a few more. Make sure you're only selecting the inner ones. As you zoom around, sometimes you can pick up three at a go, sometimes two at a go. What you don't want, of course, is to pick up any of the outer ones. We want to keep those. Okay, so that's the lot. And we're deleting. And we're left with a ring. And the reason why I prefer to do this rather than make a separate cylinder um, is because I know it's a clone of this one, so it's going to fit. So all we need to do now is to move it, select and move, and move it to the uh, wheel that we already have which is 0 and tab 0 tab 0 there we are and if we look in the smoothing heights we've got a wheel with um, a shiny bit we've got the shiny tire all the way around easy peasy didn't take too long at all now we're going to put some spokes we've put in, put in six spokes and we know that this is six inches wide so with a box just come down make a box I'm not worried about how big it is at the moment um, but it's got to be well with three foot six so that's three foot inside so that's six foot isn't it so let's make the length six foot is that enough no it isn't because actually look if we zoom right in here we've got a gap and because although we've told it to make a six foot um, diameter the six foot is actually only to those points there and when you draw a straight line where it's meant to be a circle, you're actually, what is it, the six foot is to the middle of those, sorry, the middle of those. And then these bits, either side, are going to be greater than six foot. So let's just add an extra inch onto that, five foot twelve inches. And that's a six foot one. There we are, and it's into the body of the wheel, doesn't matter. And the width we're going to make is, um, that's the width across here. I think about four inches four and then the depth needs to be well we know the wheel is six inches so we'll make the depth also four inches and let's have a look in our there we are that's our first spoke it's our bespoke spoke huh. what a width and center it make sure it's on the zeros and it's not all over the place now and uh, we'll look at it in wireframe and there's a couple of faces there we can immediately remove because they're buried in the wheel so let's get rid of those got it highlighted already convert it to an editable poly polygon delete swing it around delete the other one okay now all we need to do is to have a look at it and we want it to be the same texture as that so put it highlighted frames there we go we're using that texture again unwrap it and edit it and remember the bottom right that one there was the one we were using scale it right down move it down to the bottom right that's our first spoke uh, and then we can looking in the left window there used to happen in Jack and Earl, looking around in the okay so now we can we can get even clap that back to a poly and we're going to clone it and choose that the rotate tool come down make sure our angle snap toggle was on and I think we want to rotate it in the Z axis it's actually showing the Z as a horizontal axis I think we'll try that anyway so we've got 180 there 180 degrees and 180 degrees on that side. So if we rotate it 60 degrees, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, so maybe it's this one. Try that. Yeah, there we are. So it's rotated 60 degrees and it's just a clone. There we are. It's just another one of, uh, of the wheel. 
and we go back and it's on the x-axis so if we clone it again from the one that we've cloned and rotate it to 120 there we are that's our six wheels obviously on a bigger wheel I think that's okay for a say uh, a small locomotive perhaps mm, maybe you should have eight strokes mm. well okay yeah let's do eight strokes it looks a bit weird six bits, six spokes on the on the wheel so we'll move that that was um, six well the easiest way is to delete those start again we'll just edit clone okay and we'll rotate it 45 degrees and edit clone another 45 is 90 and edit clone Okay, another 45 is 135 okay right so there we are that looks a little bit more likely doesn't it um so there we are with our spoke wheel almost we're still going to do the flange on the back <coughs> but um that gives us our basic structure for uh the wheel there are some issues we've got to deal with here those three there are now not aligned to the world so let's just see if this will do it no so that's why we've then got to use another tool, which I've used for briefly and shown you, which is this one, Reset Xform. Realign these, these three, as if they were created uh, with the correct alignment already there. This has already got the correct alignment because it's just created as a vertical. We can't say that that's got the correct alignment, even though it has, in relation to how GMAX perceives these items. So always, I would say, it's important that Reset selected, and you'll see there that that is now a vertical um, and horizontal box as opposed to a diagonal one. And the same with that, and that one looks the same, um, but they've all had this X form. X form is really important. What will happen if you don't do this, and you can just collapse it out of the editing list? If you don't do this, is you see how it highlights it in yellow when it's X form. Um, then uh, when you load it into trains you'll find these spokes are whoo, way up in the air or down in the ground all over the place so do that just just keep it sensible so that was um, three foot tube by three foot six and um, what we're going to do now is add the flange and the way uh, I add the flange is and we know that's a 24 segment wheel go back to our primitives do another tube okay really doesn't matter how you do it and it's already got the, um, the depth um, you've already got the 24 so we just make the outer one so the 2 foot 9 that was 3 foot 6 across that's actually a 7 foot wheel isn't it Oh well, there you go. It's going to be two seven foot wheels, so it's going to be. Uh, we'll make it broad gauge. What the heck? Um, and uh, so it'll be a seven foot, seven foot uh, broad gauge uh, bogey. Um, so uh, it should have been th uh, three, that's three foot six diameter. Yeah. Seven foot times a three foot six radius. I should have done it to one foot eight radius to make it a three foot six wheel. Doesn't matter. Uh, don't start scaling the whole thing down. Start again if you've done it in the wrong size. Um, don't don't attempt to uh, patch it up that way you'll just get more and more problems it's quicker to do it again uh, so there we are there's our, our wheel so the outer diameter I'm going to make that four foot and I'm going to make the inner one three foot and I'm going to make this just a couple of inches I may even have to reduce that that's the depth of the wheel because it's just going to be the flange. Now the reason why I've made it three foot is I want it the same as the inner diameter of our wheel with tire. So there we are. So select, going to select and move, and we'll zero the whole thing again. There we are. So you can see it's overlapping. Well, that overlap on the that would be the f the flange between the tire on the outer inner side of the tire to the edge of the flange. So. Um, what we do is we reduce that a little bit because it's a bit big. 
So we're taking sand, instead of four foot, three foot eight. That's just two inches. Oh, bigger than that, three foot six. Mm, that's about right. We'll say that that's right, that's adequate for the flange. Now the reason why I've done it like this is because um, the, uh, why have I done it like this? Oh yes, I remember. Uh, because the, uh, the flange itself, oh yes, 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 no, um, this is how I do it. We'll convert it to a poly and then um, let's look at it in there. So it's sitting on top of the wheel at the moment, so we don't want that. We want it on to one side of the wheel and we'll take it, that's where we'll center the pivot, make sure that's okay. And then we'll move and select and move it to uh, one side of the wheel over here. And about there. Let's go right in and have a look, make sure we've got it right. There we are. Now the thing about the flange is if we left it like that, it was just a uh, it doesn't you know it's not right, is it like that? So what we need to do is to move the front face vertices of the outer edge, the ones facing this way, right up to and merge them with the back vertices. Now it sounds very complicated but it's not. It's just laborious. Basically what we've got to do is turn that that vertical into an angled piece coming back and I tend to join them up to give you that sort of flange shape is why two inches still might be a bit too much. We've already converted it so we're stuck with it. Okay, um, so we'll just do that. There's a number of ways of doing this. Uh, we've got it converted to a poly, so let's select all the polys on the side next to the wheel. There they are. And if we go to this view, um, we can see that we have selected, I think, all correctly, all the ones that we want. But I suspect we've also selected the inner ones of that. So let's just have a look at it from the other side. Hmm. View left. Well, let's have a go. Let's just move these, see, see what happens. So we've selected them all, we only want them to go in the x-axis. Let's drag them over, see where we are. Oops. Mm, it's just created a space there. So we are actually moving the inner uh, the inner vertices as well. If I just hide, remember the hide? hide selected or hide the unselected so we're just looking at this I think what I've actually done there is I'll actually move the whole lot in the whole of that face in so we go back to where we were and it's still holding that selection so I'll um, should really not be in there. so we we'll take it back and it's the whole of that face that's coming out you can see there so we we'll take it back to there so it's obviously I picked up those inner ones as well on this front side, although it doesn't show them as highlighted as red there. So what we'll aim to do now is, um, if you hold down the alternate button, alt button, and then aim to go around, you've got to be careful, you're only deselecting, you can see the little minus sign, deselect any of the inner ones that you have managed to pick up by choosing them from the side. You'll see now if it's not right. Because all sorts of silly things are happen. And deselect. So I think we're okay there. Just looking around. Yeah. So now all I'm going to do is move the outer vertices of the front edge until they align directly on top of the ones at the back. And so I'm going to move those. There we are. So we're leaving the inner ones behind up. And there we are. And let's zoom right in, make sure we get it right. Okay, so now let's see that in cross section. 
Up here, look, you can see the cross section. That's the flange, great big flange. So I said I'm just making this up, and you can see I'm not sticking to any sort of prototype. It's just to try and exaggerate uh, the thing for you. Anyway, that's my excuse. Uh, now, uh, another little useful tool while we're in the vertex. Um, lose that for a moment. Indeed, we can lose that for a moment. Um, is um, while we're in the vertex, let's select all of the outer ones. That's all of the ones around the outer edge. So holding down the control button and this us leaving select or us select tool it doesn't really matter which. We can just select all of those. We have to be patient in doing this. This is all the fiddly bits. Worth it doing that. Just remember that you know your fully formed bogey is not going to leap into existence in just a few seconds. You've got to put the work in. Whoops, I never picked up anything now. There we are. Now, what I've picked up is actually at every one of those points around the outer um, circumference there, I've actually uh, uh, selected both the, the front face points and the vertices and the back face vertices even though they're on top of each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the um, parameters or selections and there's one down here called weld which is really useful but you've got to know what you're doing. And it's set for a standard just under four inches. Why? I don't know. Um, that's just the way that trains uh, exporter because this is the trains game pack version Look up here on the left the trains games pack version of GMATS. So 0. Point, let's go 0. 0.5. So that's 0. 0.5 of an inch. So that should just join together. It'll weld the front and back one of those vertices and um, will actually reduce the number of vertices. And it doesn't look like anything's happened but it has because if you do it again it'll say there's nothing else to weld. Okay, because we've already welded them. So that's now just a single vertex there, vertex there. But it's it's still got the angle. Let's go up here. It's still got the angle. So the outer ones now, these ones, are single vertices, but they're joined together to these inner ones here. And uh, I like to use that for the for the flange. Uh, so let's bring back the unhide all and um, what have I done that's wrong here I've done something wrong I'm sure I have <coughs> yeah it's not right I haven't really end up I know what it is what I've done here is I've actually by trying to rush it I've made the flange so I'm just move that back into position. And I put the whole angle between the outer diameter and the inner diameter. I mean, okay, it's all right, it'll work as a flange, but I'm, it's wasteful of um, polys. There's not much of an angle there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the inner vertices, the vertices on the inner side of the flange. So all of these ones down here, the inner ones, make sure you just get them turn red, go back to over here. And I'm going to use the scale tool and I'm going to scale it so it's the same size as the uh, wheel. Because I'm going to save polys. Mm. Jumps a bad lot. I prefer it on, it's got to be on the inside. There, yeah, I was close enough. So if we look here, what I've done is I've got the we've now got a steeper, slightly steeper. So look, there you go. You've got a steeper flange there. It's on the inside of the wheel. It's not elegant at all. And it's 
not happy with it but it shows you the principle of, of doing these things um, and the other thing I can do now of course is I can take the wheel itself here it is and if we look at it in wireframe all of these faces around here all of these polygons around here are now facing into the flange so they're unnecessary so we can take all of those out to save always trying to save polys let's come down here and if we go just go right around the wheel make sure you get the right ones so you get your eye in once you've done this a few times especially when you've pan jacks it a few times you certainly learn to do the thing properly and we we'll just delete those delete isolated vertices yeah it just means because we've done a complete circle it's left a few odd vertices hanging which is it is it has created just make sure smooth and highlights if we run it around the back you see that's where I'm making my mistake because there's a, a gap there now so what I need to do is on the wheel I'm not going to make any more um, uh, problems with the I'm not going to be able to delete any more vertices but what I need to do on the wheel is to extend that inner surface back to the flange so that's what I'm going to do now <coughs> We have lots of fun making these types of wheels. We just want the X coordinate. And we want to be able to move it. And we're going to line it up there. With the outer edge of the flange. There it is. We're right about there. That's it. Let's look. Yeah, it's as fine as we can go. I'm always using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, by the way, just in case you haven't realised. Surely I'm realized by now. Anyway, so there we are, there's the flange. And because the flange very rarely gets um, polished up by the rail, unless it's a really rough old track, <laughs> that wouldn't do it any good at all. Um, what I can do is I can just texture the flange, frames, and remember that everything that we had, and here it's showing it is the circle, pick it all up, and we were using this one down here for the wheel all down there and there we are and so we end up with an eight spoked wheel yep and it's got a reflective tire on it and it's made up of as few polys as possible but still you know quite reasonable for a wheel I mean if, it, if, it was, if this was actually a three foot six inch as opposed to <laughs> a seven foot wheel then that sort of straight line circle wouldn't be so obvious and if it was a seven foot wheel I would probably make that 48 segments around there and, and just accept the heavy hit on the polygon count as it is it's 100, 160 I mean if we were to highlight all of those there we are 160 and I don't think there's anywhere all of these are polys so they're at their smallest possible size poly that's a poly these are polys yeah so we can't do anything more than that so that's our first wheel and let's just group that uh, so that it's in no, I never worry about the group names just let it do it automatically and um, and we want one for the other side so all we're going to do is clone this clone and we need to move it let's just move it and uh, then what I like to do because we'll, we'll assume it's broad gauge 7 foot Brunel 7 foot broad gauge so I'll make a gauge just a box just to help us while we're working and make it seven foot everything else doesn't matter any other line that doesn't matter just make sure it's centered doesn't have to be textured we just need to align it to the middle point okay that is our um, railway gauge so now we just pick up our first wheel and uh, we're just gonna use this view and we want the gauge we want it to be set so that the flange is just inside the gauge so actually what would help is if this wasn't looking like it was a highlighted item so we'll make it yellow so that's the gauge there's the flange bit of the wheel there's the wheel tire itself and I tend to position it just about there Three foot eight and Oh, let's go three foot nine. The reason why it's more than half a seven feet, 
No, it's just far too much. Now, three for eight. I wonder if we go to five, two, eight point five. Yeah, that's acceptable. And this one, now it's just a clone, obviously the flange is on the wrong side. So um, we're going to turn it round 180 degrees. And before we do anything else, what we're going to do is just want to save this, let's see. And we're going to save it as a demo in the demo models, demo file, uh, my trains project. So there we are. Models, demo for YouTube, where are you? Uh, <coughs> and we'll call it um, Bogey version 1.1. Okay, I've turned this round. I'm going to ungroup it immediately and I'm going to xref reset x form reset everything there and um, because we've got several highlighted what we can do now sometimes gmax blows its brains when you do this and you lose this bit of work or rather if you haven't saved it um, you're going to lose it so um, save it first before you do this reset multiple items using the reset x form and then with the cursor select cursor activated over the one of at least one of the models that you select the meshes that you selected right click and you'll get the uh, menu which you saw when I was using editable spline lathe line and lathe convert to editable poly okay so each one of those now is just back to being an editable poly it doesn't have the xref um, command there and you want to keep collapsing these commands once you reach whichever stage you like uh, and then also the other thing to do is to make sure it's still aligned to the world just like this one is still aligned to the world okay so um, and we know that that was at the position of that was minus three eight five so this one can be three for eight point five there we are oh no good because it's only picked up the tire because I didn't regroup them so that's what I need to do regroup them okay make sure the group itself is centered sometimes when you group them you need to adjust the center to make sure you get the center of the group which is what that one is that's the center of the group remember and that's going to become important when we do some of the animation so it's three for eight uh, point five, there we are, and that's our gauge. So we can just delete that now out of the way. Uh, let's bang out a an axle, and usually the axle goes through into axle boxes, so um, <coughs> uh, we can delete the ends of the axle. But let's not worry about that at the moment. That can be a simple cylinder. Let's just draw a cylinder, and doesn't have to be five height segments. You'd want multiple height segments if it was going to be like a drain pipe and go round. You know, you were going to twist it as you went, turn it in different each segment in different directions. So you end up with something that looks like a drain pipe coming down from a gutter, swinging out and coming down again. So that's why we don't need. This is just one direction it's going. Um, sides, well, it certainly doesn't need to have 18. I reckon the minimum you can get away with uh, looking too crazy is eight. <laughs> Although that's a bit few for this particular uh, this particular model so we'll do 90 and then Z turn it around uh, 90 it's far too big well we want it to be it's only six foot eight long so we'll make it seven foot long and so it one foot four we'll make it four inches in diameter which means the eight doesn't look too bad maybe, maybe this because they're ball gauge wheels will take it up to 12. Um, then what do we do? Well we just position it into the zero point which will put it between the two except it doesn't because we haven't centered our pivot point. Now it's centered over there and you'll see it's three foot six away. There it is. It's in position. And um, if we then to, to texture it and remember we're using, where are we? Here's the modify. 
it's a cylinder, unwrap, edit. We're using this square down here. It all gets a bit samey with bogies because they're always dirty. That would be if it was um, you had a bit of livery on the um, cylinder block. And there we are. And we can also reduce that down to a poly to reduce the poly count. Okay, now just like we did in the last uh, tutorial, let's just turn that into a group. Okay, and we'll change to a top down view. So let's move ourselves. We've got a top down view, <coughs> and now we'll rotate it, get it rotating. So we go up to our helpers. No, which was the helpers one? Oh, it's over here, isn't it? That one. There we are, dummy and create a dummy and we call it br b point r point and then the name axel 01 okay don't know why i call it axel just there and we'll center it we'll center it on the cylinder which must be xyz0 there we are it. xyz0 and we come down to animate and we set it well it's too long it uh, 100 so we'll change it to 32 and these will jump for the frame count okay and now we're going to animate it so we're starting at naught and we're going to end at where is it end at 32 so by the time it gets to number 32 we want it to have done remember we're in the top down view and we're animating downwards always downwards you can see in the in the measurements down the bottom there the it's going around in increments of five degrees and we keep going until we keeping the button held down the left mouse button held down until we get it to 360 and then we let go and that's what we want at 32 frames it'll have rotated once so we can jump it back to zero and we can play the animation and there it is running around like a crazy thing and now all we need to do is to link our bogey to the dummy we can click off animation that's only ever you click on it in order to do animation and you click off it uh, so it's not to affect any animation you've already done uh, when you're just mucking about the meshes very easy to do i've done it plenty of times pick up our group i'm going to link it to br axel one link there we are and if we go into the uh, main window, or the perspective window rather, I'll take it to the main window because I can actually see the model. And we play the animation. Whee, there it is. And we have an animated axle. Okay, right now in top down view, uh, thing to do here, select the whole lot. And because we want the next axle, and we're not going to have to do it all again. All we do is clone it and that's created BR02 and oops wrong direction Y direction and we'll clone it up to here and what sort of wheelbase shall we say uh, 10 foot just to make it easy so now because we've got all this linked together and this one all this bogey is now linked to that dummy and this bogey is now linked to that dummy and I'll prove it to you there we are, they're both rotating. Ain't they sweet? So we're going to call it, have it as a, a 10 foot wheelbase. So now this is when we select our dummy here, because whenever we move the dummy, because this is now linked to the dummy, whenever we move the dummy, it will move everything that's attached to it. So it was at zero, and now we're going to move it in this direction, five foot. So we're going to give it a 10 foot back so we moved it four foot nine and it's got the minus sign there so be very careful to keep that five foot and this one the dummy is at nine foot eight inches with them eight five okay so there we are that's the beginning of our um rather bizarre broad gauge um sort of bogey but i'm doing it rather big and make sure we save it I would normally say, oh, let's do what I normally do, which is save it with a second copy as well, just in case for some reason the first one gets corrupted. So that then gives you the uh, beginnings of your bogey, and 
thankfully you know we've done pretty well in a short space of time and produced something that actually looks like it might be from a steam train and there's lots of things of course we're going to add to this and um, but for example if you wanted your um, wheels to be very smart indeed if you had a very nice Victorian locomotive that was all painted and gilded and goodness knows what what you could do is you can go in and put the livery on there if you include it if you include the livery and let's just, just just select this one and completely ungroup it now it's ungrouped it um, but only as far as if we look here only as far as um, it's, it's separated those um, it hasn't unlinked them, but it's separated them from BR Axle 02. Okay, so BR Axle 01 has got a whole group, this whole thing grouped together. So this, the cylinder, which is the axle, and then those are the two wheels in groups. So let's take one of the wheels and ungroup that. And uh, if we wanted to, you see on this wheel here, because we, we know we've already got, um, you're going to edit it, we know we've already got the frames texture on it so what we can do is we can go into wireframe oops hit the wrong key as ever let's select the wheel again here we are and what we want is select face edit okay and now we just got to pick up each face as we go around that's why that hide unselected button over here you know this one over here um, is so useful because you could just hide everything else apart from this one bit of this one wheel and then it's e it looks easier to go around but anyway we picked it all up let's just display the ones we've selected there they are let's plane R them and let's reduce them right down and let's stick them in that color there and then let's have a look and see what it looks like Whoa, there we are, very sweet. I've got a nice liveried wheel. And if actually, if we had in our fr in that red frames um, texture, that red bit in the in the frames texture, if we had say a yellow slot um, uh, section within it, a yellow line in the middle, then we could draw some yellow lining out all the way around there as well. But that's a little bit more complex because you have to do each one of these. Um, uh, faces uh, separately which can be absolutely mind-numbingly dull now just because we've ungrouped it doesn't mean to say that the animation isn't going to work of course it is in fact when we go to export it we must make sure nothing is grouped with one export properly so there we are that's the beginning of our very strange bogey that's the end of tutorial number um, 11 and in um, tutorial number 12 I will add coupling rods and explain how we animate them so they chunt around with the wheels correctly.